Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Am Amir Javed Sher, Head of the Foundation Dialogue for Peace, my fellow speakers, honorable parliamentarians, respected senior officials and experts, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and very good evening to all of you. It is great honor to address this esteemed forum that brings together a very distinguished group of people with such diverse backgrounds and expertise. I would first like to congratulate the Foundation Dialogue for Peace for arranging the thought-provoking conference. Your continued resolve to illuminate the pathways to peace is nothing short of commendable service to the whole humanity. I am also deeply encouraged to be among such like-minded people who believe in dialogue, peace, and human rights as basic ingredients of true human progress. Ladies and gentlemen, safety and security across the world are supposed to be the hallmark of modern times. Sadly, the reality is very different and inconsistent around us. The world today is plagued by rising stereotype, extremism, and intolerance, and geopolitical and geoeconomic tactics which generate extremist ideologies and eventually mute, mutate into terrorism and security concerns for all. Ladies and gentlemen, security, extremism, and terrorism all hold great relevance for my country. Pakistan continues to lead the global war on terror as a frontline state for almost two decades now. It is here that I feel the need to highlight the true suffering that my country has endured over these two decades. In the fight against terrorism, Pakistan has lost more than 70,000 innocent civilians and a loss of $130 billion to its economy. In fact, Pakistan has sustained more losses than those sustained collectively by other nations as part of the global coalition against terror. These are indeed terrifying numbers for any nation to even imagine, let alone suffer. Yet Pakistan braved the colossal losses and socio-economic, developmental and human fronts and worked through a multi-tiered yet coherent strategy across all key government and security institutions. Despite the successful cleansing our national resolve to defeat and banish terror from its roots remains firm and today Pakistan stands as the most experienced nation in countering terrorism. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our collective challenges that warrant a comprehensive approach combining national and regional efforts not only to eliminate violence, extremism, but also address its root causes. Thus, all the international anti-terror covenants, resolutions, and accords must be backed by affirmative and synergized parliamentary and executive-led actions back home. Most importantly, neighboring nations must give special attention to building relations based on trust and mutual cooperation. Pakistan is a case in point in this regard. Our national anti-terror anti paradigm is pivoted on both internal and regional dimensions. Domestically, it progressively combines a holistic approach to tackling the issue on multiple fronts with a focus on building a well-integrated legislative policy, strategic, judicial, and disciplinary framework. This is followed by plugging implementation gaps through comprehensive parliamentary oversight and review. 
Our parliament in particular has played a proactive role in building strong and resilient legislative and anti-terror edifice that comprehensively address the interconnected issues of organizing, financing, arming, sporting, and abetting terrorist violence and extremism. Key acts of parliament in this regard include, during my time, the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2010, which proved to be an important parliamentary intervention towards curbing terror financing. The Anti-Terrorism Amendment Act 2013, the creation of National Counter-Terrorism Authority, NACTA, under NACTA Act 2013, the Protection of Pakistan Ordinance 2013, the Prevention of Electronic Crime Act 2016, constitutional amendments, which even led to creation of special anti-terrorism courts. And last but not the least, the National Action Plan, established in 2015 through the consensus of the parliament that armed forces and the executive and having the complete support of all political parties, making it unanimous national roadmap to eliminate all extremist activities. The National Action Plan is not just a search and destroy mission. Rather, it entails a holistic approach which ranges from education to eliminating extremist tendencies all the way to rehabilitation the victims. However, there is a dire need to differentiate trans transnational terrorism from religious terrorism. As no religion professes or preaches violence or extremism, ladies and gentlemen, it is about time that the notions of equality and basic rights for all human beings are prioritized in every matter and decisions. Without these two elements, peace can never be achieved anywhere in the world. It is time that our growing social, technological, and political progress should reflect as a widespread model of pluralism, and not that of currently prevailing exclu exclusionism, we drifting away from the notion of true and equitable inclusivity. These fast forming pockets of extremism around the world are an indicator of democracies skewing from the core principles of equality and justice. We can see the blatant violations of human rights, especially in areas like Indian, occupied Kashmir and Palestine. This must and can only end with sincere dialogue and action and not with malafide intentions, if real sustainable peace is to be achieved. This new tactic of democracy, shrouding their actions behind nationalism is deplorable. No political, social, or economic, economic agendas should justify discrimination, which eventually leads to extremism. Ladies and gentlemen, interfaith harmony holds a key to the major conflicts of the world faces today. Parliamentarians and members of society in their capacities must carry the cross in this regard by playing proactive role, shaping and molding opinion, building bridges through dialogue and promoting pluralism and better understanding. Most importantly, parliamentarians around the world must collaborate to keep a watchful eye on a state actions that leave communities around the world vulnerable to aggression and abuse in the name of security and counter terrorism by states. Dialogue must be con conducted on a platform of democracy, especially parliamentary democracy, on the basis of rule of law and respect for human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope and pray that we can all look beyond political and economic gains at the expense of peace and security 
of fellow human beings. We all inhabit this beautiful planet together. Let us work together and let us win over our collective threats together. I thank you all.